five weapons are shuffled. Step 4C, choose a player's skin. Push it into your game piece base. This is your character. Place on the central crossing. Right here. Hint, you can customize your character by painting the four blank skins or putting your own stickers. Oh, so. I didn't think I threw those away. Whoops. My bad. Something we didn't notice. It was actually came with four of these. Uh, that are blank. You can put your own skins. So they try to make you skinnable even in the board game. Okay. So it says, place one set of the overview cards. So, turn action. Scoring A, B, and C. So, between players one and two, and players three and four. Okay. That way they could print less of these. So they are reference tools I can use. All right, we're one page in. I think this is like a six page instructions. How to play the game. A player with the most recently found a diamond Minecraft is a starting player. And in doubt, the youngest player begins. So, because I had Wesley being the blue one, regular Steve, I'll have the blue one go first. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. During your turn, you must choose and perform two different actions. You cannot perform the same action twice. Hmm. Once you have taken your actions, play proceeds to the left. During the game, there are three scoring rounds. The player with the most experience points after the third scoring round is the winner. Okay, so I'm guessing this is how we count our experience points. List of actions, collect blocks. Take two blocks from the big cube. Oh. Blocks can only be collected if their top side plus at least two more sides are exposed. So you can't take these guys or any of the, these guys on the side. You can literally only take, like, oops, like that, and then like. For example, once you take these two, you can get to this one. Because two of its size and the top would be exposed. Interesting. Okay. As long as these conditions are met, you are free to choose any block from any layer and from any side of the big cube. And the blocks Add the blocks to your personal supply next to your player board. Notes, the green emerald blocks are wild cards. Use them instead of other blocks when building the structure. Oh, so although I got out before a lot of trading was pretty normal, from what I understand, you could take emeralds and trade them in for things at the villages with the villagers. So the idea is you can take the emeralds in and trade them by being wild cards, okay. Feel free to rotate the block base. This allows you to look at the big cube from all sides and find the block you need for your structure, thus having the bedrock base. Okay. Explore the overworld. First, move your character zero, one, or two spaces. 
spaces are the crossing points to the, in the grid of card stacks and weapon tokens. Never place your character on a card or token. So this, 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 this. So those are all spaces. So they kind of... So instead of printing out on a board for these to go on, they just kind of, you just set them down. So it's a boardless board game. It's kind of, because they also have these, but these are like sheep instead of boards. Okay. Next, reveal the top cards of the four corner stacks around your position. If some of them have already been turned face up, leave them revealed. Uh, that's exploring the overworld. So I would flip these four up and let's say this is gonna be Wesley's side or like we can do opposite sides too. Okay, anyway. Note the same crossing can be occupied by multiple characters. So it's not like a lot of board games where the space occupied, you gotta jump over your block. Okay. During the course of the game, card stacks might be fully depleted or weapon tokens collected. You still move your character along the path between the stacks, even if the stacks are empty. So the position still stays, and this is where a board would have come in handy, um, especially for like younger players. Build. To build a structure, your character must be the next to the corresponding building card on the grid. Blocks needed to build a structure. Wait. Oh, no, no, it's not like that. Okay. So, what it is is like if your dude's here, you get to reveal these four. If your dude is here, you can reveal those four. Okay. My B. That's how that works. That's why the positioning matters. So I'm guessing if he's here, he can reveal these guys. To build a structure, your character must be next to the corresponding building card on the grid. Okay. The blocks needed to build the structure are shown in the bottom right corner of the cards. Bottom right? It's in the upper left. Oh, bottom right of the right. Where is it? Okay. You must process the necessary. Ne bleh, I can speak. The necessary materials to build that structure. Return the blocks from your personal supply to the game box. Okay, so they're they go to they're done. I'd put them in here, probably. The you're done pile. Some structures, uh, oh wait, here we go. A green emerald block, okay, can be used to replace. Oh, actually you gotta start with the four corners because it has to be two sides. I almost forgot about that. So it's not any one like this. It's these four corners. See, this is why this processing needs to happen. There's a lot of assumptions that you just jump to because your brain doesn't fully process the uh, instructions. The instructions were clear, two sides and a top, but. So in order to get to this one, I would need to remove this, then these two, then the, to get to that. Gotcha. All right. Your number block can be used to replace any other block. Take a building card from the grid and place it on any space on your player board. And I forgot to silence myself. Some structures need a lot of blocks and have this icon in the top right corner of the card. So, that icon there.
Whenever you build such a structure, you immediately gain that many experience points. Move your experience counter that many spaces on your experience point track. Okay. Note, buildings can be built in any biome. Smiley face. They actually put... I would expect them to do the equals bracket, but they did the bracket equals. But still, they put a smiley face. Oh, now I feel dumb. Brackets equals environment type. See, that's poor design choice. I would not have written it that way. In the generation of emojis, people are like, oh, that's an emoji. You just writ, wrote at least a bracket space equals. I don't know, I'll show you what you mean. So I'll show you what, you, what I mean. See what I mean? I know I'm old, but still looks like a smiley face. Poor design. Okay, so buildings can be built in any biome, AKA environment type. For example, you don't have to place a forest building on a forest space. On the contrary, you can gain more experience points during scoring. To gain more experience points during scoring, you may want to place a structure next to a space in our cards that share a characteristic, e.g. same biome. More information can be found in the scoring below. You may build over existing structures. Simply place the new structure over a building card you no longer need. Weird. Okay. So just because it's used up doesn't mean it's used up. Fight a mob. That's right, because some of these will be mobs and not uh, buildings. Not every cured in the grid is a building. That's what I just said. Some of them are dangerous mobs, aka monsters. If your character is next to a revealed mob card, you can attempt to defeat it. Fight a mob, shuffle your face down pile of weapon tokens, and reveal three of them. Count the number of revealed hearts. Oh, it's not durability. It's how much damage they do. Uh, and compare the sum of the to the number of hearts in the mob card. Poisonous potatoes have no hearts and count as blanks. If you reeled at least as many hearts as shown on the mob card, you defeat the mob. Remove the mob card from the grid and place it next to your player board. You immediately gain the number of experience points printed next to the experience point symbol. If you revealed a lower number of hearts, then the mob stays where it is. Hmm. After the fight, shuffle your revealed weapon tokens back into your pile. You get to keep them. Put defeated mobs face down next to your player board. There are two kinds of mobs. Okay, over here they have a little square arrow to a meat symbol. A mob card, this icon, can be traded in to gain one additional action during one of your turns. To do this, when it's your turn, execute your two different actions as usual. Then return as many mob cards with this icon as you like from your personal supply back to the game box. For each return mob card, you may execute an additional action of your choice this turn. As opposed to a normal turn, you are permitted to execute execute an action that you have already executed earlier in the same turn. Oh, so you can mob fight, fight a mob twice with the extra turn only. Interesting. Now there is a time symbol. Sorry, time symbol. An hourglass. Experience point two slash tree. Mob cards with these kind of icons kept until the end of the game where they gain additional experience points for all the spaces with matching characters. Okay, so it's not always just the tree symbol. It's matching biome. So all of these. So you can kind of see that's the extra action, that's the extra uh, experience points. Uh... For example, the mob with these icons will gain you two experience points for each forest. More information can be found in the scoring below. Not below. 
That's assuming it's a PDF. Again, bad formatting. Collect a weapon. Uh, to collect a weapon, your character must be next to it. Shuffle it into your pile of weapon tokens. No, you must look at your weapon token. You may look at your weapon tokens at any time, such as when checking to see if you have a chance of vanquishing a mob. Make sure to shuffle your pile after looking at your weapons. Weapons with special abilities. Okay. Bow. During a fight, whenever you reveal a bow, you may immediately reveal one additional weapon token. If you own more than one bow, you have a chance to reveal four, five, and even six, six tokens during a fight. Golden hoe. I ain't saying she a gold digger. During a fight, whenever you reveal a golden hoe, you immediately gain two experience points. Cool. Stone pickaxe. During a fight, whenever you reveal a stone pickaxe, you may immediately collect one block from the big cube. You still have to follow the rules for collecting blocks. TNT. During a fight, after revealing your weapons, if you reveal the TNT token, you can choose to detonate it. If you do, count the five hearts on the TNT. Detonated TNT will be removed from the game, put back in the box. Otherwise, ignore the hearts. You get to keep the TNT. I'm guessing it was back in the pile. Because it doesn't say it, just says keep. A couple things they looked over when they were making this, I guess. When does the scoring happen? The first scoring round, A, biomes... Hmm. Okay. When any player completely mines the first layer of blocks from the big cube. Oh, so turns could happen for a while. It's only gone when you remove that first layer. So doesn't matter if the blocks from deeper layers have been collected. After collecting the final blocks from the first layer, the player completes their turn as usual. Scoring starts after they have finished executing their actions. Two, the second scoring round, the materials, happens with a player completely mines the second layer of uh, blocks from the big cube. So, first, second, third. Oh, okay. All right. Note, if you own a mob card that grants you additional actions, feel free to use them in the same turn in which you triggered a scoring round. Scoring starts only after you have executed all your actions and finishes finished your turn. It is possible to deplete multiple layers um, during the same turn by collecting multiple blocks, e.g. by revealing a stone pickaxe, during a mob fight, or by trading in a mob card for an additional action. In that case, after finishing churn, all triggered scoring rounds happen one by one in the usual order, A to B and C. How does scoring work? The player who just finished their turn goes first. Choose exactly one out of the four characteristics of the current scoring card to gain experience points in that characteristic. One, in the first scoring round, A, biomes, you choose exactly one biome, forest, desert, mountain, or snowy tundra. On your player board, identify the largest group of connected spaces. Oh. So, these two are connected. So you at least always get this for points, even if you didn't do anything. That's interesting. But none of the rest of these are connected. So anything connected, but not diagonally, it seems, because it shows that picture doesn't count. So, yeah. So that one doesn't count, but these would. Now, each of the desert 
Oh, and the reason forest counts as less is because there are always two connected. Interesting. And there's the least amount of stone. No, snowy is the least. Uh, yeah. So stone and snowy. Hmm. For each space in this group, you gain the number of experience points printed next to the characteristics on the scoring card. Diagonal spaces do not count. For the first scoring round, biomes in addition to the biomes on your building cards also count biomes printed on your player board if visible. You may choose a single space group. For example, you could gain six experience points for a single snowy tundra space on your player board. Each building card lists its characteristics as icons in its left margin. The top icon shown in the biome scoring A, followed by material in the middle B, and type on the bottom C. Scoring round A example. You choose desert since that forms the largest biome on your player board, like I just showed you. Uh, it consists of four spaces. The desert in the top right corner of your player board is diagonally adjacent to the rest of your desert spaces. It doesn't count as part of the continuous group. For each space, you gain four experience points. Uh, in total, you gain four times four equals sixteen experience points. All right, I think I, I think I got a grip on that. When you're done calculating your experience points. Add them to your existing points on the experience points track on your player board by moving your experience counter that many spaces forward. And the next player, in turn, order scores a biome of their own choice. For each player, once each player is scored, return the scoring card to the box. For the next scoring, you will need the next scoring card, B. For the second, okay, no, during scoring, do not remove any structure you built or the blocks in your supply. You get to keep them. Start planning for the next scoring round and build structures accordingly. For the second scoring round, B materials, you either choose wood, sand, stone, or obsidian. That's right, you wouldn't choose emerald. Um, you score the biggest continuous group structures matching the materials. The biomes would no longer matter, ignore them. Hmm. You choose wood since the wooden structure forms the largest continuous group. On your player board, it consists of five spaces. For each space, you gain three experience points. See scoring card. In total, you gain five times three equals 15 experience points. And that example is seen as thus. Yeah. And third scoring is C type. Follow the same rules, select the largest continuous group uh, as decoration, dwelling, animal house, or bridge. Third scoring round happens so fast you didn't have a chance to build more structures. Your biggest group are two dwellings or two animal structures. Animal houses are more valuable. Um, there were five versus dwellings four. So you select that group and gain 2 times 5 equals 10 experience points. So it seems that you get... Uh, 31, 41 is your total for that. Oh, we're at the final page. End of the game. The game ends after the third scoring round. Now it's time to score each mob in your collection with those icons. You gain that many experience points for each space on your player board with that characteristic. Hello, Mike. 
uh, important. As opposed to the scoring round A, B, and C, the mob cards count all spaces of that characteristic. Spaces don't have to be connected. So in case the forest one to be one, two, three. After each player has scored their mobs, compare your experience points. The player with the most experience wins the winner. There's a tie, the player with the most blocks in their supply wins the game. If there's still a tie, tied players all win. G Willikers. If you're playing for the first time with kids, there's a great way to simplify the three scoring rounds. Instead of counting the largest continuous group, just count all the spaces matching the criteria in your play board. This means less playing ahead, since you can place the building cards on any space on your playing board. Nah, I'm not gonna play it the shortcut way. Hint, the variant can be combined with the normal game. For example, allow kids to score by simplified rules while grown-ups score by the normal rules. Okay, now I, that I can see. Okay. I think I've got a hang on it. Handle on it. So I'm going to grab something real fast, and then we will start to try and blunder through this game. I'll have Steve go first. So that way we know what we're doing. Let's have him go zero. No, let's have him explore. Oh dear. We got Zimab. Oops. And. Okay. So it said. Blocks, overworld, build, fight, collect. You only need one heart to kill a spider, so I could potentially take another turn right off the bat. So Steve is... Blue, blue. So this is all the blue stuff. So how to fight. Uh, reveal three tokens. One. Oh, I've already killed him. Two, three. Cool. So I get the mob. I get him. I go forward one, two. Then I can use him to take another turn in which I am going to collect. This. So what do you do? Oh. Can you collect that? To build a structure, you have to be next to it. So, can't. So, it, it stays on there until you actually. Huh. Okay. So, in that case, I could take a sand and an obsidian. That would be my turn. Steve's turn. All right, so next turn. Uh... So I'm gonna fight 
and collect, I think. Ooh. ooh. Uh oh. I lo wait. I flipped over the wrong card. <laughs> I definitely. Oof. I whiffed that one. Is that really three each? Three each. Wow. It's actually almost impossible. Not almost impossible. It's just really low odds. Should have looked into that first. That was dumb on my part. So, bye bye mob. So now I can collect. I will collect sand and wood. That will be my turn. So I think what Steve's gonna do, he's gonna collect two and he should be able to build. So, wood and sand. He's gonna use these three to make this. Right there. And that's his turn. So I think. Oh, no, wait, that's over there. Whoops over here. Let's put it there. Um, so this dude, armor dude, is going to move here. Oh, wait. Move here. And is going to build. Yeah, I mean, losing that fight early on kind of put armor dude at as a disadvantage. All right. So that was his turn. So now we're back over to... Steve's turn. Steve is going to move and explore. Oh boy. I don't know. Can't fight that one yet. You don't even have four hearts worth of. Ooh. So he moved and he explored. So that's his two turns. So back over to Armor Dude. We'll explore. Hmm. So one requires four blocks, three and three. So if we're talking biomes though,
It's explored. Now we need to collect some stone, though. Let's get... Sand. Don't I have some sand? Yes. Sand. And hey, while we're at it, let's grab the wild card. And that's Armor Boy's turn. On to Steve's turn. Steve is going to pick up the two weapons. Steve is going to be a formidable force, even though the other one's the Armor Dude. That's why I've decided his name is. Steve and Armor Dude. Okay. Shuffled in. Yeah. Got to keep that straight because I'm playing both players. Uh, collected both. I think it's one per each. Right? Collect a weapon. So that's his whole term. All right. So Armor Dude is going to collect a wood and collect another emerald. Actually, he's going to collect twice. This emerald and this emerald. Whoopsie. My bad. I'll put that back. All right, what's Steve going to do? Uh, Steve needs to get to building. You're going to need to start collecting. So let's grab... Collect again. An obsidian. Ooh, and an obsidian. Alright, back over to Armor Dude. So if that's gonna be four. It's twelve. Oh, there is a numerical value to this. Okay. So from what I understand, the idea is is there's already three. Here, and all you gotta do is pop in one, boom, you've already got four. Now they're only worth three each, so that makes 12 points. Now, if you flip up a bunch of wood, or uh, forest ones, great. You can get some quick and easy points for the first biome setup. Um, the second one is sand. Sand's always a block apart, it seems. At least two of them are. So you could put one here. Because they're four, though, four times three is 12. Well, quick and easy. Stone's a little harder. Stone, you'd have to go boop, boop. But then you'd have 20. However, I'm sorry, no. yeah. But with... So stone's that odd boy. It doesn't fit the math, which makes it a wild card. Interesting. Um, and because snow does fit the formula, formula, there's only ever one. But if you put a second one down, like this guy here, two spaces can be twelve points. So four spaces to be twelve, three spaces to be twelve, or two spaces to be twelve. Now, stone is not well set up for 12. You can be set up for 10 or 20, basically. But at the same time, three of them equal... Huh.
Crud, whose turn was it? <laughs> My bad. I got so caught up in the in the how they set up the formula. The formula itself is kind of interesting. You could go search up in your own path, or you could cut off other people's ability to grab stuff if you see them trying to grab something that or you both want to grab something. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's Armor Dude's turn. That's what it is. So... It would be... One, two, three would get him this piece. He's gonna go the snowy route. Then he's gonna move one, two. Okay. Now it's back to Steve's turn. Steve's going to try something interesting. He is going to sand, stone, obsidian, obsidian. Go for the try that route. He's already got 12 in hand, but if he can't pull off 12, or if he's got 12 in hand, so if he can't pull off stone, he'll be fine. But if he can pull off stone again, he'll go to 20, all the way from 12. So that's good. That's smart. Plus, he's already got one obsidian, and that's B's phase. He is going to... Mm, one, two. He's already got some good weapons. Alright, so Armor Dude is going to explore. Uh oh. Oh, that's an easy one. Steve, Armor Dude. Well, let's use the straight up wood that he already has. Grab this. Now he has 15. And there's his turn. Steve's going to explore. Whew, look at all these mobs. I have to fight them at some point. Ooh. That could be potentially interesting. actually difficult to get around. 
Um, Steve's going to move. So my thought is, is that while the sand is tempting, nothing there is too tempting, and not necessarily ready to fight the Enderman just yet. Hissy boys, you probably could, but I think you could be better served by seeing what else is out there. Um, running out of areas to explore without fighting. Smart idea would probably be to grain up. Even though it's kind of terrible. You just have to get that top layer removed before Steve could. So, grab that, do that, build this. Here. That way, if you need some snow, you can still do that. In the meantime, that's his turn. Steve is going to explore. Ooh, snow. And obsidian. Ah! Taken out by the spider mob. See, that's, that's the item to get. You can always take out the spider, unless you get triple. Triple neg. Okay. Yeah, this was a good plan. So, fight the spider. One. Two. Just enough. Okay. Spider's out. Steve. However... Gonna use his new turn ability to fight the skeleton. He has better stuff. So one, two, three. Doesn't need to use the TNT because the what steel or stone sword, I guess, is good enough. So keeping the TNT, but getting the mob. Oh, and don't forget, spider is worth two experience points. One, two, and the... Let's see if it's the same. Oh, this one's worth three. Interesting. So they're not just because they're skeletons doesn't mean they're the same. The skeleton's worth three. One, two, three. Hmm. Interesting. That is good to know, and I should not look when I'm shuffling, because that defeats the purpose. All right. That would be Steve's turn. And we got Armor Boy. Now he could try to make a break for that. That's also expensive. Could try exploring. Move and explore, I think. Is what we're gonna do. Move. Explore. One. Ooh. Two. All right.
On to Steve's turn again. I think he's hoping for some stone. Ah, some stone. Double stone! What is that? I have never seen that before. <sighs> Time to start grabbing stuff, though. Got need more stone. Stone in the wood. Uh oh. Grab them up. He needs them both. It's hard to shuffle when there's a limited number. So you have to like try to remind your brain to not pay attention where those items that you just got were. You're sorting them around. All right. Steve's definitely doing better here. So Steve, what are we doing? We are taking the two stone in the wood and we're building this. We now have 20 points worth. And we are up six, nine. Ooh. We are up on Armor Boy. We have six, and this is four. Wow, okay. And then let's collect some more. Don't need any stone. Need obsidian and wood. So now, Armor Boy is down. <sighs> By a couple of points, I need to grab Oh dear. Oh wait, that's an That's going to be close. It's a two stone, right? I got to be careful. One, two. Oh, you can't double up. I screwed up there. There was a previous turn where I doubled up and I don't remember where. So that is not something that I was supposed to have done. See, if we had someone here, they'd be like, no, you're not supposed to double. I'm like, thank you, but doing it by myself. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to double up. I think it was collecting. I think I collected like four. Just <sighs> So I doubled. Then I'm going to move. So I, I collected and moved. All right. Steve's turn. He's gonna grab that other one if he can. Okay. Stone. This. Grab a sand. And that. Use those four to build. So I was about to cover the this biome, but remember I have this guy who gives me points based on the number of those biomes I have. So I have to keep that in mind. So that was Steve's turn. However, he's now ahead. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and I'm down no matter how much I do.
Grab a wood and an obsidian. Wood, obsidian, two stone. Grass. Forest. That's his turn. Now Steve's ahead, so he's going to end the turn by collecting and the next is going to be for he's already got several obsidians Gonna build this one. Ta da! That ends the turn. So now I have to score. So. materials so biomes so to keep track of that 5 10 15 20 25 this goes away you get 25 added to 7 so that becomes 32 32 he gets 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So he goes to 21. Because he hasn't killed anything. And he's behind. Yeesh. Okay. So we go on to the next turn. So that would be Armor Man. Now, Armor Man's got to worry about the next thing, which is the material type Ooh, and that also has to be continuous So let's move. Let's grab sand and sand. And that's his turn. Now he is going to. Can't grab the obsidian. Does need sand, and then can grab the obsidian. This is going to be a little bit harder. We'll see how this goes. <clears throat> and we collected. We can't build it yet, so we'll explore. All right. Now it's back over to his turn. We will collect and build. have many of them but we got a lot still all right which means we're gonna have to push him quick before he gets a chance to build anything
So he needs to So we're to Steve. Steve's going to collect. So that has obsidian, obsidian, he's missing one. So he still needs one more obsidian to build that. But we can't collect again. So let's fight. One, two, three. He loses. That's funny. But hey, at least Steve finally took a loss, right? All right. Back on over to my man here. Um. So he is going to Yeah, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to grab wood. We're going to grab stone. Use the wood into two. To build this. Something anyway. Okay. Back on over to Steve. See, that wasn't enough though. Now. Steve can end the turn. Or in the scoring round. All of those. To build this here. And we still have two of those. Gotta keep that in mind. So that ends the turn. So now we have to score up for materials. So he gets continuous obsidian. Continuous obsidian. Wow. He gets 6, 12, 18. 24, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, he gets 5, oh wow, so he, more are going to be once around the board, um, so we had 32, we get another 30, that makes 62, so 50, 62, Oof. Steve doing good, Steve's supposed to be played by my son, playing in my place. So, let's see how we did here. This one is sand, worth four points. Better than the stone, or better than the wood, but not as good as the stone. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five as well, but we have two points less each. So that's five times four, so he gets 20 points. Still hasn't killed anything, so he goes up to 41. He is trailing. All right, that zone is over. Now we have to worry about types. Monuments are your best bet here. And is it continuous? Yes, it's continuous. So that's least, most. Da, 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 woof. So far it's looking like houses. Look like on this side. Decoration house, decoration, pig pen, pig pen, decoration. So far, we're looking at animal areas on this side. So it is armor, die, armor guy's turn. So let's start by exploring. What is that? 
know I've been out of it for a while, but not ever seen a structure like that. I explore and I grab. Well, the amount of potitos in here are definitely decreased. So that's good at least. I'm glad the poison potatoes don't make you lose any. Because that would definitely put you at a disadvantage. Alright. As for Steve. Biomes and houses. Um... Let's grab wood and a stone, and let's build this. So now we have three pig pins thus far, all lined up. So that's the third best, that's 15 points right there best this one has is two houses, which is 12. So that's not good. But back on over to Armor Dude. How we doing? Armor Dude. What are we going to do with him? Yeah. Let's grab the pickaxe and let's move. That's what we'll do. He's going to take more of a fighting stance and see how if that garners him some bonus points. Might be a better way to win this, even if someone's getting better stuff. Like at that clutch moment, you know. All right, let's take a look. On to Steve. What are we thinking for Steve? Steve wants pig pins. We have one house, so that's not really worth his time. He has a good deal of decorations. All right, so then let's have him move. Fight the Skelly Man. Uh oh. Gotta use the TNT, otherwise he loses. And his whole maneuver goes out the window. So, boom goes the TNT. Let's sort it out. I think Armor Dude now has the better weaponry set up. So, we, this may only take him so far. So gain four experience points. One, two, three, four. And then use him to take another turn. Let's go after the hissy boy. Go one, two, okay, three. Nope, he loses. So the plan was to go one, two, three, but after losing the TNT, yeah, that... Didn't work out too well. What do I have? One heart, three hearts, two hearts. So I have the potential right now to go up to six hearts. I could get an Enderman if I get a perfect draw, but we know you won't. You need the big kaboom for that. So this may not be a good plan. So in this case, Armor Dude's going to try to take on Enderman. One. Nope. So I need five. Four. Are you kidding me? I was one short. Fine. What are we going to do from here? Got 
got two houses, but I have potential to get a lot of decoration. So let's spin these two. Put this decoration out here. Steve's turn. He needs... No real houses. So let's get this whole pig pen thing situation taken care of. He needs more weaponry too, so let's go here and explore. Decoration. House. House. Okay. So what's my boy gonna do here? I think he's gonna yoink the house. That and the wood. His house. See, we got a moment here. This could go a couple of different ways. Then he's gonna try and fight. Oh, he's right, he fought. No, he's fought, now he's gonna they fought last turn. So now he's going to fight now. See, I'm having trouble keeping up. So, let's try though. Let's try and fight. One heart. Potato. Same thing. I know I shuffled. Lost to the Enderman. Wait a minute, I know I got better weapons. So that's three hearts, potato, two hearts, potato, two hearts, four hearts, four hearts. We have two of those swords. I could take on up to eight hearts. No, eight plus three. Yeah, I could take up to 11. I do good, the best draw, but whatever. Just need to do better. All right, Steve's gonna move. He's gonna explore. Ooh, TNT, just what he needed. All right, my dude. He's gonna grab two wood and he's gonna fight. Three hearts. Yes! Okay, now, there's my 11. Boom. Six points. One, two, three, four, five, six, catching up. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Steve is going to use both of his turns because he needs better weapons and he lost his TNT last time on a dumb skelly boy. That was a poor choice. Got stack more like armor boy now. So we're going to... Ooh! Taking the house. Put it there. Well, there goes Steve's idea. Wait a minute, does it only work with the... Type as well. 
this is what I forgot. Been worrying about the boys. But like this only does biome. Scoring. Let's see how that works. So the type of structure matters if it's a structure. In this case, a wooden structure. Do I have any woodens? I have one, and that's it. Versus houses. Of which I also have. Well, derp. Fine. Steve's gonna go down here and explore. So, what do we got? Pig pen, that's what he's wanting. House. And a house. So, let's build the decoration. here let's fight hissy boy oh just need oh that was it that's all i needed good because the other two were just potatoes so hissy boy we get five points for that one two three four five Use him to do another thing. Where I'm gonna move. There. Okay. Now, Steve's turn. He wants to build that oinker bay. Get one more. He'll be in good condition. In order to do that, he has a stone variable miss. So he's going to move two. And now it is Armor Boy's turn. Yeah, he's going to fight. Let's see what happens. Oh, wait, I forgot to sort this. That whole side was still there. I guess this is more necessary for poor players. All right, you go fight. Three, just need three more. Potato, one, didn't get it. I move down there. Hey, Cora. I'm up here. Hey. Okay. So, Steve's turn. Steve is going to try and... Oh, can I scare Mike? Hi, buddy. Didn't know you're under the chair. All right, let's try this again. Uh, he has 
this would So five, I have three, so I just need two. So one, two, now he can build his Winkerton. Where do we want the Winkerton? So it connects, oink, 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 here. All those oinks. All right, that's the end of his turn. Okay, if we let him do any more, he might get ahead. Actually, he might still get ahead. So let's do some evaluations. Because here's where we figure, because we're technically behind, but we're catching up. So, if I grab and build that now, either or doesn't matter. Then I put it here, in the turn. What do you want to throw? I didn't even it's say. PM. I didn't even ask Alexa, that was really weird. Okay, so. Maybe something I said sounded like computer, because that's her name. All right. So if I did that, I ended the turn. I would have one, two, three, four, five houses. Houses get four. That'd be 20. That 20 would push me to... Seventy-two, which is ahead of him, and then I add this. It's two for every decor piece, which is two, four, six, eight. Which would make it eighty, right here. However. Currently, he has four oinkers worth five, so that would also go up 20, which would put him 5, 10, 15, 20. He'd win. So I can't make that maneuver just yet. So I'm going to grab... Two wild cards. And I'm gonna build that. We're still in play. I'm going to move zero spaces. No, no, that was my two turns because I collected and built. So, Steve is going to try and fight the Enderman. And then he'll probably collect and end his turn. Okay, yep. I forgot that now that I know that I could just end the turn and win but let's add insult to injury and fight the enderman because I have one wood house or wood building and that would give me another two points one two three literally one two three three four five six he wins against the enderman gets to keep it 
gain six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, Cora. Grabs the two blocks, therefore ending the game for scoring points purposes. He has 100% fully won. Because I would only go to 80, and he would go far beyond 80 to like closer to 90. So, looks like Steve is the winner. And it's just me. And I've got to figure out how to make this far more entertaining. So, but now I know, maybe you know now too, how to play this game. So I'm going to have to collate my thoughts on this. It's a little messy. The strategy is good. I think they cut a little corners with the directions and the lack of board. I think they could have added a little extra board there. So, yeah. I think I'll clean up on my own time. Um, I was planning on going to nine, but I thought it would go a little longer to learn how to play. It seems that running a game doesn't take very long. It's about... It can take anywhere from one to three hours, depending on number of players, how familiar, that sort of thing. That seems to be the final evaluation. Altogether, not too bad. I think this will be fun to play with my son now that I've figured it out. And um, I'll kind of do a little quick uh, visual essay for the part two video. And... Um, Maybe a little play session with my son, just to kind of demonstrate, uh, obviously, a more quick-cut version for it. And I think that's about it. The funny thing is, is that the guy who lost was supposed to be my character. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to try and win with both characters. Anyway, uh, thank you for maybe eventually joining me. Uh, I think I'll probably post this uh, in an archive somewhere since um, Twitch makes this disappear. I think the cat's messing with something. Um, in 14 days. So I'll just archive it somewhere. So thank you for post... Was it post humorously? Yeah, I think it's post humorously joining me. So um, I think we're going to do the every Thursday at 6 thing, maybe. We're still kind of playing with that. But we want to get into some regular streaming. So right now, unless something changes, that might be the plan. In any case, I'll see you next time.